Reading the Times for Wednesday, February 26, 2020. CDC officials warn of coronavirus outbreaks in the U.S. In Washington, the Secretary of Health and Human Services told a Senate panel that federal and local health departments will need as many as 300 million masks for healthcare workers and additional ventilators for hospitals to prepare for an outbreak of coronavirus in the U.S. This is an unprecedented, potentially severe health challenge globally, Alex M. Azar II, the Health and Human Services Secretary, told a Senate subcommittee. Senator Pat Murray, Democrat of Washington State, asked the Health Secretary whether he, they, whether he thought the United States currently had enough masks in stock. The World Health Organization said the pace of confirmed new cases in China, which exceeded 2,000 a day a month ago, had dropped steadily to as low to a low of 508. I felt like crying. Coronavirus shakes China's expecting mothers. The 40-year-old mother of one is 17 weeks pregnant, but the district hospital where she is registered is no longer open to pregnant women. Pregnant women must find a hospital that offers maternity services and register to give birth there. China's National Health Commission has told hospitals that if pregnant women are registered to give birth in a newly designated virus treatment center, they must make reasonable arrangements as soon as possible for those women. Amid insults and interruptions, Sanders absorbs a burst of attacks in debate. The mood of combat of enveloped candidates besides then <laughs> the mood of combat enveloped candidates besides then Mr. Sanders, with Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts again castigating Mr. Bloomby, the former mayor of New York City, in vivid terms about his past support for Republicans and allegations that he had pressured an employee to have an abortion, a charge Mr. Bloomby vehemently denied. Mr. Biden the fight, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bidden, fighting for survival in a state on which he has staked his candidacy, delivered perhaps the most searing critique of Mr. Sanders, invoking the 2015 massacre at Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal, Episcopal Church near in here in Charleston to confront Mr. Sanders for his mixed record on guns. Polling in the Super Tuesday states still suggests that Mr. Bloomby could be in position to beat Mr. Bidden and Mr. Sanders in several key battlegrounds, but the former New York mayor's advisors have acknowledged that the trajectory of his candidacy could turn on his performance in the debate here. Trump in India demands two liberal justices recuse themselves from his cases. Weighing in on a domestic matter as he began a day of ceremony, meeting, and a joint news conference with Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India, Mr. Trump seized on a dissenting opinion last week by Justice Sonia Sotomayor and years-old comments by Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg to demand that the two Democratic-appointed jurists recuse themselves from any cases involving him. Justice Sotomayor did not overtly accuse Republican-appointed justices of being biased in favor of Mr. Trump. As the president asserted, the five justices who voted in the majority in the cases were all appointed by Republicans, but Justice Sotomayor did not frame her disagreement in partisan terms, and her dissent was written in much the same way as, other as others by justices who lose divided rulings. As Emmanuel Macron's impact grows, so does French disdain. In the living memory of most French, and perhaps even beyond, no president has had a greater effect on his country's economy, society, and politics. Analysts and Mr. Macron's haters and backers all agree. At the same time, Mr. Macron has remade French politics in his own image, eliminating the major political parties, killing the left, and neutering the right, so much so that he is still the odds-on favorite to succeed himself in 2022. Emmanuel Macron is a bigger reformer than many of his predecessors. 
said Olivia Garlon of the CNRS Research Institute, who has written a recent paper about the president's policies. Uh, there is something uh, going on. Yet there are scars left behind by Mr. Macron's relentless reformism in a country which, if not content, has achieved an egalitarianism solid enough to shield it from the crude populism and demagogy that has overtaken its Western allies. Mr. Macron is unpopular enough that some analysts are finding new vigor in the poll numbers of politicians on the center-right, like Xavier Bertrand and even the far-right leader Marine Le Pen. There is a rejection of Mr. Macron, which is enormous and which is absolutely incomprehensible. Said Caracondus, a political scientist at Science Pro Po. Some of it is stylistic. Carrick had hit bottom. Then Trump pardoned him. Mr. Carrick's circle of friends had ascended in Washington under Mr. Trump, including his former boss, Rudolph W. Giuliani, now Mr. Trump's personal lawyer, and Christopher Ruddy, a confidant of the president's and a chairman of a prominent right-wing media outlet. Mr. Carrick followed Mr. Giuliani into the private sector, where they held themselves out as experts in crisis management and counterterrorism at home and abroad. After a brief stint as Interior Minister of Iraq following the U.S. invasion in 2003, Mr. Carrick was nominated by President George W. Bush as the Secretary of Homeland Security. Friends, including the journalist Geraldo Rivera, attended a farewell party at Mr. Carrick's home in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Before surrendering to federal prison authorities, Mr. Carrick posted a note online recalling his long public service, quoting a line from his friend Sylvester Stallone in Rocky and criticizing the judge who sentenced him. New Delhi streets turn into battleground Hindus versus Muslims. Mr. Carrick's... What the fuck? Oh, hold up. Okay, we've corrected it. Mr. Modi's government has choreographed Mr. Trump's visit as a demonstration of India's rising stature on the world stage, seeking to turn the page on months of street protests against Mr. Modi that organizers said were aimed at preserving India's foundation as a secular democracy in the face of what they see as an attempt by Mr. Modi and his allies to turn India into a Hindu state. Indian Muslims, who had looked on in despair at win after win for Mr. Modi's Hindu nationalist base, were galvanized to demonstrate, joined by human rights activists, academics, and those worried about the country's direction. Since last year's election, hand in Mr. Modi and his Bharatiya Janata Party, Another term in power, most Indians fear a resurgence of communal violence across the country, sparked by Hindu triumphalism and Muslim desperation. Trump sees commitment to religious freedom in India as riots break out. President Trump said on Tuesday that he and Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India had made progress towards what he hopes will be a landmark trade agreement between the two economic giants. A trade deal with India has been a priority for two years for Mr. Trump, who would like to have another economic agreement to take on the campaign trail before the November election. There's a vast difference between the two epidemics, Mr. Trump said, knowing that Ebola was nearly always fatal, while the death rate among those infected with the new coronavirus has been a relatively low. Russian court further detains ex-Marine on charges his family calls a uh, false. The rest of the former First Service member, Trevor Reed, 28, of Texas, has drawn comparisons to the 2018 detention of Russia in Russia of another ex-Marine, Paul N. Whelan, on espionage accusations. Mr. Reed's family has not spoken to the news media since his arrest more than six months ago, wary of upsetting the Kremlin by making broad statements about what may be the motives behind his prosecution. After the party ended, Mr. Reed became highly agitated, leading his girlfriend and others to call the police so that he wouldn't get hurt, according to the statement. China sentences Hong Kong bookseller Gui Minhai to 10 years in prison. 
The outcry over China's reach took an international dimension because Mr. Gui was secretly spirited to China from Thailand and held in custody for two years. Mr. Gui's sentence was the latest turn in a murky and long-running effort to clamp down on the market for some sometimes salacious books on the Chinese leadership that are published in Hong Kong. Sweden's former ambassador to China, Anna Lindstert, was charged last year with acting outside diplomatic controls after she arranged talks between Mr. Gui's daughter, Angela Gui, and two Chinese men who said they could help her free her father. In coronavirus crisis, Korean city tries openness, a contrast to China. Rather than locking down entire cities as China had done, South Korea had nearly has neither forcibly controlled the movement of people in affected towns like Daegu nor banned visitors from China. Daegu's mayor, Kwon Yong-ji, said his goal was to test all citizens with potential symptoms within the next month, opening temporary monitoring stations across the city, borrowing medical staff from the outside and securing hospital beds in nearby towns. Many of Daegu's citizens have turned their anger toward Xincheongji Church, which mainstream churches have long branded as a cult for their unorthodox interpretations of the Bible. Spanish hotel is locked down after guests test positive for coronavirus. The Spanish authorities scrambled on Tuesday to trace everyone who had come in contact with an Italian doctor and his partner who tested positive for the coronavirus while on vacation in the Canary Islands, locking down a major resort with about 1,000 guests in the hopes of limiting any possible outbreak. In another Lombardi link, the Spanish authorities said Tuesday that a 36-year-old Italian woman living in Barcelona had also tested positive for the virus after returning from the region. The Canary Islands Resort, the H10 Costa Adeja Palace in Tenerife, was not placed under quarantine, which involved separation of those who had been exposed to the virus, the authority said. Spread of coronavirus could spread of virus could hasten the great coming apart of globalization. As the virus spread to Europe and beyond, Mr. Vel Vejvoda said it makes China seem a bit more fragile and dependent on China as the factory of the world more iffy. The rapid spread of the virus from Asia is another straw on the camel's back of globalization, said Robin Niblett, director of Chatham House and London Research Institution. The outbreak in China feels distant geographically and culturally with a, a touch of racism, and if we measure lives lost in a different way, he said. The Italian sociologist Ilvo Diamanti had a more philosophical concern. The spread of the virus to Italy had called into question our certainties because it makes the defense system in the face of threats to our security a more complicated, if not uh, unnecessary, he wrote in Monday's La Repubblica. The world no longer has borders that cannot be penetrated. To defend against the virus, Mr. Diamanti wrote, one would have to defend oneself from the world. Hiding at home and turning off the television, the radio, and the internet in order to not die and contaminated by others and, and become spreaders of the virus ourselves. We would have to die alone. Politics, money, siblings. The ties between Joe Biden and Valerie Biden Owens. The Biddens are a very close family and have always tried to help each other said Mike Lux, a Democratic strategist who worked in Mr. Biden's 1988 presidential campaign. The group ranked Mr. Biden among the top five sen senators paying the most money in salaries or fees to family members. Mr. Biden's 2002 campaign paid Ms. Owens 51286 in salary and made 3618 in payments to her daughter Casey. His leadership pack also paid 38974 to Hunter Biden's firm for legal fees in 2005 and 2006. Mr. Biden's campaign said Hunter Biden's firm worked on the account, but he was not involved and received no payments from it. Bernie Sanders heard his name a lot on stage for the first time as an unambiguous frontrunner and object of his peers' attentions. Mr. Sanders 
made clear in a debate in Charleston, South Carolina, on Tuesday that the changing circumstances, strong showings in South Kakalaka, and on Super Tuesday could propel him in a runaway delegate lead. Would not much change the man, as Mr. Sanders moves to expand and consolidate his hold on the Democratic primary, he at once reinforced the reservations that many in the party still have about him and laid bare the power and peril of his politics, his own unyielding worldview, and just how unlikely he is to adapt it to anyone else's definition of electability. If success in Nevada prov proved that Mr. Sanders could win in a diverse state, the primaries in South Kakalaka and on Super Tuesday could be the greatest test yet of his capacity to build a big tent coalition and make good on his long-standing pledge to expand the electorate. Fact-checking the South Kakalaka Democratic Debate. What Miss Warbur said. Who funded Lindsey Graham's campaign for re-election last time? It was Mayor Bloomby. And that's not the only right-wing senator that Mayor Bloomby has funded. Uh, Mr. Bloomby supported specific Republican candidates, including Senator Patrick J. Toomey of Pennsylvania, who supported extending background checks in gun purchases, a priority of Mr. Bloomby's. During his 12 years as mayor of New York, Mr. Bloomby was a primary financial supporter of Republican majority in the state Senate. Who won the Democratic debate? Experts weigh in. Bernie has been doing this since 2015, and somehow his gun answer has never gotten better. Patrick Dillon, former Senate senior advisor to Mr. Obama, tonight just underscores how Big a missed opportunity last week was for all the candidates who ganged up on Bloomby and left Bernie alone. Bernie is on the defensive and struggling to turn it around, and the audience reaction is catching him off guard. Mo Alethe, warrior, is the only candidate who can fundamentally cut into Bernie's base, and she understands exactly how to do it. Jessica Lerich. With tickets $1,750, debate audiences are elite of the elite. But that's not new. The Charleston County Democratic Party offered sponsorship options ranging from $1,750 to $3,200, which included admission to the debate as well as access to other gatherings surrounding the event. According to a local news station, WCSC, this is something that the average person doesn't usually get to go to. The station quoted as the county par char party chair as saying, for the first Democratic debate in Miami in June, the Florida Democratic Party offered sponsorships for thousands of dollars, according to the Miami Herald. For $4,500, a sponsor gets two tickets to a pre-debate reception on June 26th and two tickets to both de debate nights, the paper reported, as well as $1,750 tickets that cover admission to one reception and the debate for one person. Democrats pan Trump's coronavirus response as markets plunge, with the Dow Jones Industrial Average suffering its worst two-day loss in history. On fears of the spread of the novel coronavirus, Democratic presidential contenders on Tuesday night tried to turn the tables on President Trump in an area long perceived as one of his strengths, the economy. Elizabeth Warrer, earlier on Tuesday, Senator Elizabeth Warrer said on Twitter that the Trump administration was bungling the response to the coronavirus outbreak and delivered a warning. Joseph R. Biden, Jr., former vice president, said Mr. Trump had eroded the Obama administration's budgetary increases for the CDC and the National Institute of Health. There's no GOP primary in South Kakalaka. Some Republicans will vote anyways. If you vote in the Democratic primary, you're stuck with the Democratic Party until the next presidential election. You'll be with us for a while. South Kakalaka is one of 15 states with an open primary, allowing people to vote regardless of party affiliation. Accusations of party rating were also raised in the GOP primary in Michigan in 2012 and in the Republican race in South Kakalaka in 2000. Miss Martin said a closed primary was the way to infuse integrity back into the political process, arguing that including those not aligned with the party would taint it. NSA phone program cost $100 million, but produced only two unique leads. 
In an interview, the board's chairman, Adam I. Klein, praised the National Security Agency for deciding last year to suspend the program, not only because of its high cost and low value, but because of continuing programs in which telecommunications companies kept sending the agency more people's phone records than it had legal authority to collect. In the spring of 2018, the National Security Agency purged hundreds of millions of records after it realized that its database was contaminated with some files the agency had no authority to receive. The agency turned off the program in 2019. The National Security Agency has said the, agent, the cause of the problem was largely the telecoms were returning erroneous call records. New Intelligence Chief asks Election Czar to remain in post. The new acting, acting Director of National Intelligence, Richard Grinnell, has asked an intelligence official who angered some lawmakers with a briefing about Russian interference in the 2020 election to stay on in her role. As the intelligence community's top election security official since last year, she was subjected to withering criticism after her briefing on a classified hearing of the House Intelligence Committee on February 13th touched off a fierce partisan debate over the nature of Russian interference in the 2020 election. Dan Coates, the former director of national intelligence, appointed Ms. Pearson last year as the election security coordinator in an effort to help intelligence agencies work better together and more quickly provide the information on foreign threats to the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security. First woman set to pass special forces training and join the Green Beret. A National Guard soldier is set to become the Army's first female Green Beret in the coming weeks, according to military officials, following the Pentagon's opening of all combat and special operations job to women 2016. The woman, an enlisted soldier, is in the final stages of training before graduating from the roughly year-long qualification course, or Q course, as a Special Forces Engineer Sergeant. In 2017, a woman was accepted into the Army's 75th Ranger Regiment, an elite light infantry unit that operates alongside the Army's most prestigious commando teams under the Joint Special Operations Command. The Army Special Forces, known colloquially as the Green Berets, are one of the last Army assignments without any woman. Judge in Roger Stone case warns about attacks on jurors by Trump and others. The federal judge overseeing the criminal case against Roger J. Stone Jr. warned on Tuesday about attacks by President Trump and others on a juror in the trial, saying the fomenting public anger about the guilty verdict could prompt some, someone to take it out on members of the jury. On Tuesday, Mr. Stone's lawyer claimed that during jury selection, the four women concealed her level of knowledge about Mr. Stone and his relationship with the president, as well as animosity towards Mr. Trump. The president vowed to let the process play out after Mr. Stone's sentencing on Thursday, but said he may intervene if he felt unsatisfied that Mr. Stone was treated fairly. Malink Rod reaches $1.6 billion deal to settle opioid lawsuit. Malink Rod Pharmaceuticals, the largest generic opioid manufacturer in the United States, has tentatively agreed to pay $1.6 billion to settle thousands of lawsuits brought by state and local governments over its role in the opioid crisis. Under the terms of the agreement, the United States Division of Malink Rod that produces generic opioids would file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Malink Rod is the very first opioid company to reach even a tentative national settlement agreement with municipal governments and most of the states. Ex-Senator Feingold joins fight over courts as liberals try to counter Trump. Russ Feingold, the former Democratic senator from Wisconsin, is assuming the leadership of the American Constitution Society, a progressive group active on judicial nominations and the justice system, signaling that Democrats are planning an aggressive effort to sharpen their focus on the federal courts as the defining issue. On Tuesday, Mr. Trump called for Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Sonia Sotomayor to recuse themselves from any case involving him because of a past comment by Justice Ginsburg and a recent dissenting opinion by Justice Sotomayor. More than 190 new judges have been put on the bench, including two Supreme Court justices and more than 50 appeals court justices. Supreme Court rules for U.S. agent who shot Mexican teenager. 
In a concurring opinion, Justice Thomas, joined by Justice Gorsuch, called on the court to overrule the Bivens decision entirely. Justice Kavanaugh, writing for the majority, said it was enough that the Arizona Supreme Court had considered whether the additional evidence warrants a different sentence for Mr. McKinney, who was initially sentenced to death in 1993 for killing two people in their homes during separate burglaries. Justice Ginsburg wrote the dissenting opinion in the case McKinney v. Arizona, number 18-1109, saying the death sentence imposed by Arizona Supreme Court was unconstitutional. Supreme Court weighs whether encouraging unlawful immigration is a crime. Mr. Fagan said the court should limit the law to narrow circumstances that would exclude many of the scenarios that troubled the justices. Mr. Fleming urged the justices to focus on the words of the law. Several justices, seemingly eager to find a middle ground, cited a friend of the court brief filed by Eugene Volokh, a law professor at the University of California, Los Angeles, mentioning it 11 times. Democrats block abortion bill, abortion-related bills as Republicans seek election advantage. Senate Democrats on Tuesday blocked action on legislation that would ban almost all abortions after 20 weeks of pregnancy and impose criminal penalties on doctors who fail to aggressively treat babies born after abortions, causing a pair of voters of votes that Republicans hope to use to their advantage in the 2020 election. The second, the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act, sponsored by Senate Ben Sass, Republican of Nebraska, would require doctors to exercise the proper degree of care in the case of a child who survives an abortion or attempted abortion. Experts say such circumstances are extremely unusual, but the measure would apply to cases in which a baby is not viable outside the womb and doctors induce labor as a means of terminating a pregnancy. Uh, Mr. Sass insisted that doctors and abortion clinics were engaging in passive infanticide by withholding care from babies who survive abortion. Army judge proposes 2022 trial in Guantanamo's coal bombing case. Lanny J. Acosta Jr. included the data in a four-page order that set out a series of deadlines for pretrial litigation over the next two years. The United States took custody of Mr. al Nashiri in 2002 in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. And this case has been plagued by delays and complications since, starting with a decision to interrogate him in the CIA's secret overseas prison network rather than take him to a court in the United States. Vance H. Spath failed to disclose that while he was presiding over the case with the Justice Department prosecutor, he was negotiating with the Justice Department for a civilian job as an immigration court judge. School for the Deaf reports dozens of decades old sexual abuse cases. The learning institution, the American School for the Deaf, which was founded in 1817 in Hartford, Connecticut, detailed the pattern of abuse in a report after a year-long investigation by an outside lawyer hired by the school. The report, which was released Friday, and based on interviews with 81 alumni, former faculty and staff members, and other witnesses, said the abuse occurred from the 1950s through the 1980s at the main campus, now at West Hartford, and the school's campus a Sola Bella summer facility in Salisbury, Connecticut. The school said that the findings were reported to the appropriate authorities and that it had contacted the West Hartford Police Department, the Connecticut Department of Education, and the State's Department of Children and Families where it's, when it started the investigation. Jeffrey S. Bravin, the school's executive director, declined to comment beyond the report and the statement on the school's website. What happened to the students caught up in the college admission scandal. When Sophia Macy, a daughter of the actors Felicity Huffman and William H. Macy, was flying to Juilliard for a final round of auditions for admissions to the Performing Arts School, officials said an email withdrawing, sent her an email withdrawing an invitation. Ms. Janavs acknowledged paying a college consultant $100,000 to secure inflated scores on her daughter's ACT exams. Macarena Junillas, the wife, said one daughter was not connected to a cheating to cheating, and one daughter not connected to cheating had nonetheless faced hostility from teachers and students at her high school. <coughs> Charter schools in surprise political fights at Trump and Demo as Trump and Democrats turn away. 
For charter schools, the Trump administration's shift in emphasis towards private school support comes at a precarious time. Democratic lawmakers have targeted the same federal charter fund. Richard Bury Jr., the chief of policy and public affairs for KII, KIPP, public charter schools, said the charter grant was grant cut was unnecessarily antagonism, unnecessary antagonism. But more concerning was the 28 other programs for low-income public school students being cut. At the same time, Senator Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren have vowed to end the federal charter schools fund, accusing charters of draining resources from traditional public schools. A mini Mississippi River may help save Louisiana's vanishing coastline. In building the model, the designers are trying to monitor the water currents, pressure, and flow around the structure, and to determine how much sand the diversion could be expected to deliver through its long chute to the basin. The scale model, about 200 feet long and 70 feet wide, had to account for the difference between the weight of actual sand at the speed the real river flows and the much slower rate of flow in the model. After the tests of this mid barataria model are completed, the model will be broken down and a new one representing a second diversion will be rebuilt. As domestic terrorists outpace jihadists, new U.S. law is debated. The law is a blind spot with law enforcement about the threat white supremacy poses, said Michael German, a former undercover agent with the FBI who researched researches national security law at New York University's Brennan Center for Justice. In the short term, a far more likely scenario is that a new law than a new law is the State Department designing a foreign white supremacist group as a terror organization, allowing for law enforcement agencies to pursue any U.S. adherence for providing material support for terrorism. The debate over domestic terrorism law underscores just how complex the terrorist threat has become in the nearly two decades since September 11th said Shamus Hughes, the deputy director of the Program on Extremism at George Washington University. Dems, you can defeat Trump in the landslide. There is a blind spot within law enforcement about the threat white supreme... Oh my gosh, seriously? I doubled up this one too. One second. Sorry, technical difficulties. This is what happens when I listen to podcasts while I do this. All good. Who would bring more... Oh, wait, one more. Okay. Who would bring more passion to the task of revitalizing our inner cities than Corey? I'm asking Mitt Romney to be my Commerce Secretary. He'd be the best person to promote American businesses and technology abroad. And it is vital that the public understands that my government would be representing all Americans, including Republicans. I would like Andrew Yang to be my Energy Secretary, overseeing our nuclear stockpile and renewable energy innovations. He'd be awesome. I'm asking Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to serve as our UN ambassador. The self-proclaimed National Security Party folks like Lindsey Graham, Marco Rubio, and Tom Cotton don't lift a finger to stop Trump's politicization of our first line of defense, the National Intelligence Director set up after 9-11, then the Republican Party is not asleep. If the country is going to be governed responsibly, the leadership can come only from Democrats and disaffected Republicans courageous enough to stand up to Trump. Wall Street gets worried about coronavirus. Every insignificant market tremor was met with new offerings of easy money from the Federal Reserve, so every dip was greeted as reason to buy. No global crisis seriously rattled the market until last week. Wall Street was unusually blasé about the coronavirus, too, and had reacted with far less alarm than it did during any of the eight global contagions since World War II. Not only has the market players been lulled into complacency by easy money and the long calm of the bull market, but they also began this year in a state of unbridled optimism. The American stock market has also fallen less than the global average. The new wealth test for immigrants is un-American. The wealth test targets immigrants seeking permanent resident status based on a petition filed by an American citizen or a permanent resident family member. Proponents of the wealth test often say their immigrant forebearers didn't depend on cash assistance for needy families, rental assistance, or food stamps. If the goal is to assure that immigrants are self-sufficient and productive, the Immigration Service could look to Sweden and work with organizations that provide English language classes and job training to immigrants. Why religion is the best hope against Trump. The Christian season of Lent, a time of repentance and reflection, is upon us. 
The political hero of the Christian right of 2020 has used the National Prayer Breakfast to mock the New Testament injunction to love one's enemies, and its clear leading conservative Christian voices are putting the Supreme Court ahead of the Sermon on the Mount. Hearing King on the radio, Mr. Lewis was moved to action and came to share the older minister's philosophy of Christian nonviolence. Has Australia reached a climate tipping point? Aren't the fires terrible? And so many animals lost. It's heartbreaking. We need to do more about climate change. But anyway, how was your trip to Japan? We are thinking of taking the kids next year. Uh, was the snow okay? Conversations of a country driven off a cliff, suspended in the air for a moment between the fall. The time has come for us to put away childish things and reckon with climate change to do what we can to prevent a future in which extreme weather is more intense and more frequent. Fending off a sense of hopelessness with small changes will not fend off climate change. Mediating the politics of abortion, Gracie Olmsted is certainly right to argue that the issue of abortion should not be avoided by either party in the next election. Gender issues are complex, which is why they are often simplified in political discourse. Abortion is not simply an issue of money, it's an issue of choice. Who gets to make one? At NASA, Katherine Johnson reached for the stars. I was saddened by the sudden death of Katherine Johnson, the NASA mathematician who shattered racial and gender class ceilings as her calculations of space flight trajectories took American astronauts to the moon and returned them safely to Earth. The poet Robert Browning wrote that a man reach a man's reach should exceed his grasp. Oh, what's a heaven for? Thanks to Mrs. Johnson's brilliance, our collective grasp finally matched our reach to the heavens, and the heavens became a place for us to visit and explore. If Jeff Bezos, the American chief, the Amazon chief, and the world's richest person, wants to spend money to address climate change, the best investment he can make would be to make sure that Democrats take back both the Senate and the White House. It's wonderful that he wants to fund research, that in the short term our immediate needs is for stronger regulations. Large companies aren't going to voluntarily reduce their carbon emissions if it means reduced profits, and the American Republican, Republican Party and the Republican Party has made it clear that it wants to weaken environmental regulations, not strengthen them. The truth about alligators in the subways in New York City. In the 1957 episode of the television series, Leave it to Beaver. For instance, the characters Beaver and Wally bought an alligator from an ad in the back of a comic book. 1963 Little Fictional Gators. By the 1960s, sewer gators had found their way into numerous cartoons and books, including Thomas Pynchon's 1963 novel, V, in which little gators could be purchased from Macy's for 50 cents, and the characters Benny Profane makes a living hunting albino white alligators, alive and breeding in the sewer system. 1980, a gigantic mutant gator and alligator, the 1980 horror comedy, a baby alligator flushed down the toilet in an unnamed city, becomes a gigantic killer mutant gator after feeding on discarded lab rats that were injected with growth hormones. 1982, a very cool alligator on t-shirt. In 1982, a two-foot alligator was found swimming in Westchester County Reservoir that is part of New York City's water supply. New Jersey may raise cigarette tax to highest level in nation. In New Jersey, about 13% of adults smoked cigarettes in 2018, down from 17% in 2011, according to the State Department of Health. The campaign, using an algorithm it updates each year, estimates that $1.65 increase in tobacco taxes in New Jersey would lead 46,300 adults to stop smoking, including 4,600 smokers aged 18 to 26. A spokesman for the tobacco manufacturer Altria, Altria, David B. Sutton, said the proposal was unfair to adult smokers. Nine of the cigarette tax increases across the nation since 2002 were passed by voters in ballot initiatives, including California's $2 per pack increase, which passed in November 8, 2016. Michael Stephenson, 63, of Montclair, New Jersey, said he stopped smoking about 20 years ago, partially because of the price. After Trump mocks a seawall in New York, plan is abruptly shelved. Mr. Trump's tweet in January criticized one of the five possible proposals to reduce storm flooding 
along New York Harbor and its rivers, a sea barrier with retractable gates that would stretch from New Jersey's to Queens. A senior Trump administration official said that while the administration remains committed to helping communities address their flood risks, the New York Project and three others that were also recently suspended in Baltimore, New Jersey, and Rhode Island had little or no programmatic direction or end in sight, and that the corpse was reviewing their scope. Canceling the whole project strips New York, New Jersey, and of their main chance to get federal aid to address flooding, he said, adding, there's no study underway at this scale that could give federal dollars to protect our people, our businesses, and our ecosystems. Girl, 10, is killed by school bus in Brooklyn. The bus struck the girl around 6.30 a.m. near the intersection of Crescent City and Wartman Avenue in the East New York area, the police said. Mayor Bill de Blasio has made street safety a priority with the Vision Zero plan to eliminate traffic, traffic deaths. The city's recent safety initiatives include lowering the speed limit on most streets to 25 miles per hour and adding more speed cameras throughout the city. Now Weinstein faces charges he raped a woman at the Beverly Hills Hotel. One of the accusers in Los Angeles' case is Lauren Young, a model and actress, who is one of six women to testify at Mr. Weinstein's trial in Manhattan. Although Los Angeles prosecutors could not charge Mr. Weinstein based on Ms. Bataliana, Bata, Bataliana's, Bata, Batilana's, Guer, Ms. Batalana Gutierrez's accusation because the events issue did not happen in their jurisdiction, they hoped her testimony would show a pattern of abuse. In New York, the two main accusers, Miriam Haley, who said Mr. Weinstein had forcibly performed oral sex on her in 2006, and Jessica Mann, who said he raped her in a Midtown Manhattan hotel room in 2013, continued to communicate with Mr. Weinstein and had sex with him after what they said were his attacks. Inmate number 06581138Z, what awaits Harvey Weinstein behind bars. Although his conviction on Monday, Mr. after his conviction on Monday, Mr. Weinstein's lawyer asked the trial judge to recommend Mr. Weinstein be sent to a special facility known as Northern North Infirmary Command, as and the judge said he had no objection, saying the decision was up to jail officials. The sheet laid out each of the five charges that Mr. Weinstein faced. The jurors were told that they could find Mr. Weinstein guilty of two of the three lower charges in the case, one of two counts of rape and one count of criminal sexual conduct without finding him guilty of the two most serious charges of predatory sexual assault. How BTS filmed a top secret video in Grand Central Terminal. The Tonight Show production team approached Metro North Railroad, which runs Grand Central Terminal, to schedule a time to shoot last December, said Meredith Conti, manager of special events for Metro North Railroad. Once the day, February 8th, had been agreed upon, the crew of about 180 members, including dancers, a marching band, camera operators, and members of the production team, arrived to set up at Grand Central Terminal at about 10 p.m. It's Saturday, so it's a much quieter time, said Catherine Rinaldi, president of Metro North Railroad. She added, we are over the moon about how successful this has been. The terminal, home of the MTA Metro North Railroad and a subway station serving four, five, six, seven, and S lines, was still open as usual. But it was a weekend when traffic is not as heavy, said Miss Conte, who oversees hundreds of productions in her 14 years on the job and was president the day of the shoot, and was present the day of the shoot. Every year, the staff of Grand Central Terminal accepts 20 to 30 large-scale production requests from TV and film companies, Ms. Conti said. Fashion mogul Peter Nygaard to step down amid federal raid. raids. At least four women who have accused Mr. Nygaard in recent lawsuit of sexual assaulting them when they were 14 and 15 in the Bahamas have also met with a task force. Mr. Bacon hired private investigators to pursue criminal charges against Mr. Nygaard, saying he wanted to get justice for the women. Mr. Nygaard has long surrounded himself with women traveling with an entourage of models and paid girlfriends. Harvey Weinstein is gone, but Hollywood is still a man's world. These include Time's Up, the celebrity-fueled group that, in the addition to condemning sexual harassment, has formed a legal defense fund to help connect women of various industries to lawyers and reframe an organization run by Women in Film and the Sundance Institute with the goal of achieving gender parity in the entertainment industry. 
women have less trepidation about helping each other, networking with each other, being vulnerable with each other, said the producer Amy Bayer, the board president of Women in Film, according to a 2019 study from the University of Southern California and Berg Inclusions Initiative. Only 17% of executive positions in major media companies were held by women, with only four of the women coming from unrepresented groups. Stocks slide for the second day as U.S. sounds alarm on coronavirus. In, Shang in China, the Shanghai stock market fell 0.6%, while the market of the city in the city of Shenzhen rose about half a percent. The Hong Kong market was little changed after falling more than the mainland markets on Monday. Australia's stock market fell 1.6% on Tuesday. Not just an Italian problem, coronavirus threatens Europe's economy. By the time the deadly coronavirus arrived in Italy's industrial heartland, shutting down his factory and threatening Europe with economic damage, Antonio Falcetti was already a veteran in the battle to contain the global epidemic. As the coronavirus exploded into a public health emergency across China in January, Mr. Falcetti was forced to significantly reduce production and operate with a small fraction of his usual workforce. If Italy's factories have trouble making their products, that could lead to shortages of components and disrupt plans in Germany and throughout Europe. Disney CEO Bob Iger hands keys to Magic Kingdom to its seventh chef. Robert A. Iger, who delayed his retirement four times in recent years, abruptly stepped down as chief executive of the Walt Disney Company on Tuesday. After 15 years at the helm, Disney shares dropped 3% in after-hour tradings to $125.30. Since taking over as chief executive in 2005, Mr. Iger has led Disney to record financial results, even in the face of economic downturns, the occasional horrendous movie write-off, and changing consumer habits that dented ESPN, the company's longtime profit engine. The company's vast consumer products division has been in decline, and Disney's television operations, which include ABC, Disney Channel, and Freeform, have been struggling with ratings, weakness, and a lack of breakout shows. As Trump visits India, a trade deal remains elusive. President Trump's visit to India includes a state dinner, tens of thousands of cheering onlookers, and even a marching band of camels. But long-awaited trade deal between the United States and India is notably absent. Since trade talks began, both the United States and India have escalated tensions by ratcheting up tariffs and trade barriers. Vice President of the Asia Society and a former trade negotiator said the United States was hardly alone in its inability to get India to sign a trade deal. Franchise workers lose some power to challenge labor practices. A parent company that is considered a joint employer typically must also bargain with workers at a franchise, franchisee or contractor if they form a union, a requirement that the new rule will help many parent companies avoid. After getting caught violating ethics rules for a time, Republicans on the board, <laughs> Republicans on the board, uh, Republicans on the board are now ignoring these rules and barreling toward reaching the same anti-worker outcome another way. Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, Democrat, who is running for president, said in a statement when the board proposed its new rules in September 2018. Wilma B. Leibman who served as chairwoman under President Barack Obama and said pro-worker groups were likely to challenge the new rule in court. Mr. Emanuel's former law firm has represented a party in the case that led the Obama Labor Board to hand down its joint employer ruling 2015. Ms. Liebman said opponents could also argue that the board has not seriously considered alternatives and objections, something required by law and noted that the new rule defied a federal appeals court decision largely upholding the Obama-era doctrine. Tesla autopilot system found probably at fault in 2018 crash. Tesla's autopilot driver assistance program and a driver who relied too heavily on it are likely to blame for a 2018 crash in California in which the driver died, a federal safety agency said on Tuesday. The findings included the determination that Autopilot failed to keep the driver's vehicle in the lane, that its collision avoidance software failed to detect a highway barrier, and that the driver was probably distracted by a game on his phone. In 2018, for example, Mr. Musk was widely criticized for taking his hands off a Tesla Model 3 steering wheel while demonstrating Autopilot for the CBS News program 60 Minutes, something the vehicle owner manual instructs drivers using Autopilot never to do. 
Wall Street is finally waking up to the damage coronavirus could do. After reports of people infected with the virus at major economies of, in major economies of South Korea and Italy, the more pessimistic view began to prevail across major world markets. It's one thing if Wuhan is on lockdown, another if all China is on lockdown, another if all Asia is on lockdown, and another if the whole world is on lockdown, said Patrick Chovanek, an advisor for Silvercrest Asset Management and an expert on the Chinese economy. Markets accustomed to optimism may be all the more vulnerable if the virus becomes a global pandemic that causes meaningful pullback of commerce across major economies. Fed officials say coronavirus ec ec economic fallout could spill over. The Fed officials entered 2020 planning to leave interest rates unchanged for a time, and they are waiting, they are waiting for something uh, to significantly change their economic outlook before they alter the course. The economy is now growing steadily with a jobless rate that has hovered near a half-century low for more than a year, and inflation has remained persistently below the Fed's 2% target. Markets have nearly fully priced a rate in a rate cut by year end and see a high odds that the Fed could cut more than once. Colleges invest. So what's the town like? Gets an upbeat answer. From its perch on a serene hilltop in Waterville, a blue collar community of roughly 16,000 on our outside Portland. Colby is seeking to lift the city's fortunes as well. Colby's fates is intertwined with these cities, Mr. Green said. Mayor Nick Isgro said that Colby's investments were welcome, but the focus on the arts and restaurants should not overshadow the city's need for better paying middle class jobs. And that, my friends, has been reading the Times. The day? Well, it's a Wednesday. Well, the day of the calendar is February 26th, and the year, you know the year. What's the year, Shaz? It's 2020.